Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video we're going to be looking at the Blender menu system. And uh, I'm going to not really go into a whole lot of detail, I just want to go over basically the different menus that you'll encounter in Blender. As we go forward with different tutorials, we'll get into a little bit more detail on the actual inner workings of all the menus, but just to give you a very basic idea of, of what to expect as you're moving around and navigating within Blender. So to start off, you can see I'm in Blender 2.66a. And we'll start off by looking at these, uh, these menus at the bottom of the windows. Of course, if you change the properties of what you're looking at here, which is called the editor type, say if we change over to timeline, you get different uh, options for each one of those. So I'm going to change it back to 3D view. And that's just a way to change this menu. And of course you got your different options here. So each window that you look at will have those options. And then if we look over to the right here, we have this, this particular window here is set to the properties. And the properties are a little bit, well, they're a lot important because especially if you're doing modeling, because it contains all the things that you normally would do when you're working with the model, such as the actual rendering, the scene setup, the world setup, your object setup, object constraints if you have any of those that you set up for it, object data, textures, physics, and when you create an object, say I create a, a cube here, then you have things Additionally, that show up such as some modifiers that you can apply to your object and your object data and the actual materials and things like that. So that's where you find all those uh, nice little things that affect your objects. So other menus that you'll be using, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this here. Within your windows, say if you're in a, uh, a 3D window here, if you hit the T key, you'll bring up a tools menu, and that shows up on the left here. And that just gives you some extra tools that you use when you're working with your objects. And of course, if you hit the T again, you can take it out, it disappears. The other menu that you'll see pop up is N. If you hit your N on the keyboard, you'll get this menu. And this is some extra things here, like um, again, if we had an object, I probably should just leave this cube up here. But things like it shows the dimensions of your object, the scale, rotation, all that good stuff. Uh, you find options in here such as your background images. That's where you can set background images here to use as reference images. Um, and you'll notice when I move the mouse and everything I'm doing on the mouse here, you're getting this display here. And that is also done by this in in menu and that's called screencast keys that's actually built into blender really nice so we hit in again and that menu disappears another menu that you well let's just look at the top menu here that that we're seeing of course you'll have the fought normal file menu where you can do a, a new new um, file or uh, open a file save save as all that good stuff uh, your user preferences are in here and then under your add menu, you have your, you know, where you can add your cubes and planes and other uh, modeling objects there. And down here, camera and lamp are some of the important ones. You have a render menu. And of course, the window shows windows in different ways and your help. And then you see this area here. Now, default is the default setting here, but if you click on here, you'll see that there's other kind of setups you can go to, like it, if you went to animation. Really, all these are is just taking um, all your window setups and kind of conforming them to what you might, you know, mostly use if you were doing animation. So this is, I mean, you can set it up any way you want and you can create these yourself, but these are like some default settings that... Um, comes with Blender. And I usually just leave this on default because I'm normally doing the modeling and working in this area. Sometimes I'll go into the compositing. 
and then you have this scene area. Right now, I only have one scene, but you can actually, um, if you created a model and you wanted to put it in a certain, you know, camera angle or whatever setup, you could have that scene and you could create another scene and just set it up a different way. A lot of different things you can do instead of like, you know, making a brand new complete file, you can actually do it within the same file using different scenes, which is kind of nice. And then of course you got your uh, render engine. Blender now, now has two render engines and that is the default Blender render, which has been with Blender for quite a while. And then if you click it, you also get a cycles render, which is the new, fairly new um, render engine that is available in Blender. And you also have the Blender Blender game, which uh, I haven't done really anything with, so I can't tell, tell you too much about it, but it's there if you need it. And so that's the basic menus you have across here. It'll tell you how many vertices, faces, and tries uh, that your object has. Uh, so that's this is like an informational area here. And you actually have, if you went up here and get your little uh, double arrow, you can drag this down. This is kind of a secret area where you get some... This is the information menu, and I think you can also get it by uh, choosing one of these. And I think it's like called info. is the same thing. But this, this gives you information on the actual processing that Blender is doing. For example, if I go to export a object or a, a model and it's not exporting correctly, a lot of times I'll come here and try to see uh, what kind of error has been received there. So it's more uh, program programmatic information that is available in there. Okay, so uh, other than that, if you go into File, User Preferences, you get these menus here. And these are all the settings you can do with Blender, of course, such as the interface. You can uh, change all these options. Again, I'm not going to go into very much detail with any of these, but just be aware that these are all the main program options that you can change. Editing, input. One thing I change here is um, which I select with as far as the mouse goes. Uh, Add-ons is very important. If you have a certain add-on that you want to use with, with Blender, then you can choose it here. You can see right here that I've chosen the screencast keys. And I think that's actually chosen by default now, I'm not sure, but if not, I probably chose it at some time, and, and that's how I'm able to get that. Uh, you can change around the interface to look how you want it to look completely. Um, file. There's some file options there, how many saved versions, how many recent files it shows, those kind of things, which are kind of nice. Uh, auto save, all good options to know about. And system options. Uh, one important thing that you want to look at here is your compute device. If, um, if you have a, an NVIDIA graphics card, you can choose the CUDA CUDA in your graphics card in order to render faster. Uh, I just recently got an NVIDIA, so I'm able to do this. If you don't see this and you see just CPU, chances are you don't have a supported video card that you can render using the um, graphics processing instead of your CPU. So those are the user interfaces there. Um, another just quick important thing about the menus um, Blender is very, very heavily a keyboard-based uh, program. What I mean by that is like, um, you know, keyboard hotkeys. For example, if I hit tab to go into the interface here, and I'm sitting on this face, I've just selected this face, I hit E, which means extrude. So E is the, is the uh, keyboard shortcut for that. Now, um, I, there's been a lot of criticism in Blender about the keyboard shortcuts. You know, so many keyboard shortcuts, oh my god. But the thing is, really, I mean, you don't have to know all of the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, there's a, you know, a set of very important ones that we're going to be learning, and you just stick with those, and as you need other ones, as you, as you grow in your blending, 
you know, your, your blender learning experience, then you just keep adding more and more. And it's not a big deal because you'll, you know, as long as you use it enough, you'll remember them. Um, and it just really makes it a lot easier when you, when you're working you, to just hit the key that, you know, does a certain thing. Now, uh, another important menu that, uh, that you would use on the keyboard is shift A and that brings up the add menu. This menu is the same thing as going up here and choosing choosing these that menu there. So shift A and that's how you would create your you know your geometric shapes there to start out with. So those are the probably the main primary menus that we need to be concerned with moving forward. Like I said as we move along we'll learn more about the the details of what each menu does. I mean, it's not very important right now to know what every single thing does. It's only when you really need to do something and need to use it when you when you start there and then you know, okay, I need to know what this does or I need to know what that does. So we're, we're going to be learning those things as we go along. So no need to fear all these menus in Blender. I mean, it seems complicated when you first start. I know when I first started, it's like, what do all these things do? Who knows? But just, you know, basically you just learn one thing at a time and, and just build on that learning and we'll get there. So anyway, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and talk to you later. Thanks for watching.